I doubt that anyone in this room would disagree with the statement that diverse perspectives foster breakthroughs in our understanding. Scott Page's 2007 book, the title, The Difference, How the Power of Diversity Creates Better Groups, Firms, Schools, and Societies, makes it abundantly <clears throat> clear. What Senate Bill 83 seeks to redress is the power of bureaucratic offices commonly known as Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, or DEI offices, which despite their fair spout sounding name, do more to obstruct intellectual diversity that is the very lifeblood of higher education and American progress, rather than to improve it. The news in American higher education is riddled with stories about conflicts between DEI and free expression and intellectual diversity. The story of Stanford Law School's DEI Dean's intervention during the shoutdown of Fifth Circuit Judge Kyle Duncan is just the latest widely reported example. Mandatory diversity statements in hiring, promotion, and admission are an especially troubling trend. The title of an article in the February 4, 2023 issue of The Economist of London tells us that we are making fools of ourselves in the eyes of the world. I quote, American universities are hiring based on devotion to diversity. Mandatory statements are quickly taking hold of academia. I commend that well-balanced article to everyone's attention. At the moment, it appears that one in five faculty hires is to some degree dependent upon the candidate's diversity statement. At the University of California, Berkeley, the hypothetical <coughs> answer, you can find this on their website, I always invite and welcome students from all backgrounds to participate in my research lab and in fact have mentored several women, would likely end the applicant's eligibility for a faculty position. How many young Albert Einsteins are being cut on Berkeley's diversity chopping block? Some programs at Ohio universities are already using mandatory diversity statements for hiring and promotion. Such requirements are likely to spread without bold legislative action, such as Senate Bill 83. Please note the importance of Senate Bill 83 and be aware of the danger of inaction. Please heed the words of Keith Whittington, political scientist at Princeton University, and I quote, there are a lot of similarities between these diversity statements as they're being applied now and how loyalty oaths, which once required faculty to attest that they were not communists, worked. I um, commend to you, not out of ego, but just for more information, uh, I published today a column in Forbes called, Do DEI Offices Help or Harm Diversity? It is worth noting regarding section 30, 3345.80 that Berkeley's Division of Equity and Inclusion has a budget of $36 million in 2020. This money goes to salaries and programming in DEI. It does not increase diversity by the logical process of awarding more need-based scholarships. And in fact, we tracked the data the federal data from 2010 through 2021 for Berkeley's African-American student population. It's gone down from a frighteningly low 3% to an even more frighteningly low 2%, despite all of that money being poured into the diversity and inclusion office at Berkeley with its 152 full-time staff and its $36 million budget. 